Pitts ball of light. The atmosphere in the car got thick. He passed out. His partner passed out. They woke up a mile from the missile silo. All documented. Richard Doty was there the next day. I mean, we know this event happened. That's how is that not at least yeah. something you go further and say, I can't explain this. Yeah, it I mean, I think I think we have to remember that in the early days of Arrow, when they were getting testimony from people like Mario Woods, a lot of the testimony was taken over the phone, not even on a secure phone line. They weren't recording it. They were taking just handwritten notes. So it was almost, it was like, it was just, uh, we'll just, we'll play ball. We'll, we'll listen. We'll take some notes. But it doesn't seem like they were interested in following up on it or taking it seriously. Uh, you know, the, the early days of Arrow were, we know were, were a joke almost. There was no funding. It was just a mishmash was, of of something or other. But Yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, you know, but, but my one last thing about Arrow, do you, do you think Phillips could, could write this course? Uh, or, or not write, the, could he write the ship's course and make Arrow something that, is there any redemption for it? Not under Phillips. I think he's just this interim figure who's just been put in until they find someone new. Oh, okay. I, Is that the case? I'd like to, I think that's the case at the moment. I think he's interim. I think they, they are looking to actively recruit a new head uh, of the of the group. Um, we, again, we'll see. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I try and remain positive on these things, but it's very difficult it's for me to, to think that there's any turnaround with Arrow. Uh, I think... There's a reason why so many people are skipping Arrow and going direct to Congress because the trust just isn't there and maybe it can't be re rebuilt. You know, in an ideal world, I'd like to say it could, but it's not looking good. Yeah, and whatever happened to that presidential, um, you know, when the shootdowns happened, the president spoke about forming his own group. I wonder whatever happened to that, but um, it, I mean, it is it is what it is at this point. Um I think Congress, um, the only thing I'm worried about with Congress is that, do you think uh, it, there there's a possibility that with David Crush coming forward, you have, and, and it's not like it's any secret, right? So Lockheed, any of these people who have this technology um, hidden away or, you know, in some bunker, you know, is it? by David Grush coming forward, kind of raising the flag, do you think they started moving these things? And, you know, uh, inevitably we're just going to be playing a shell game? I mean, if I was one of those individuals sitting on that technology and, you know, we had language coming out at the end of 2023 about potential eminent domain being written into law, I would certainly move that and bury it <laughs> even deeper, you know. It's almost like right. we gave them the opportunity to to really hide it further. So, yeah, I mean... It's, that's my worry. It's, it, yeah, that's the thing as well, isn't it? You know, I think it was Ross Coulthard mentioned it on, on uh, a show the other day that, you know, Arrow, I think, went to some of these uh, aerospace uh, corporations and sort of said, oh, you know, have you got this technology? Like... What? They're not going to tell you yes. I mean, this is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, I got know? it in the blue room. Uh, right? <laughs> why don't you take a walk with me? Just so, idiots. Oh, man, it's 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 a joke. So, yeah. What, who, who knows what, what happened? I, I, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, as we go through this year with the Intelligence Authorization Act for next year and the NDAA as well. Who knows whether that's going to have some robust language in it or not. We don't hear a lot right now from... Many of the Congress people, I, I, I'm told there are things happening behind the scenes that we're not seeing in play out on, on Twitter and stuff. But will we ever get any kind of results from that? Will we see this ramping up or getting into fifth gear again with new hearings and stuff? I, I hope so. And overclassification on these kind of... the you know i it can't it's countless it's count it's countless there have been countless people who have said that there are videos that exist that would prove this beyond a shadow of a doubt if they were released by the government why do you think or how do you think 
one of these has not been leaked other than the, you know, the New York times or anything that Corbell's put out or like, cause there are clearly like, uh, we, we hear about it in so many cases where there was clearly recording capabilities by the military of something, um, extraordinary. Um, and you know, like I said, there's an overclassification. Um, do you think that a lot of what we're seeing these days is man-made? Um, uh, what, what, I mean, what's your take? I mean, it's hard to say why things haven't leaked. Uh, I, I don't know who has access to where some of these smoking gun videos are. Do they sit on a JWIC server that thousands of people have access to, or are they really compartmentalized? I, I honestly wouldn't know. I wouldn't like to hazard a guess at, at that. Uh, who's to say that we haven't had videos leaked that we don't know are real that they may be hoaxes this is the game as well isn't it that there could be s some genuine information out there that it's so mixed in with the disinformation and misinformation that that we we simply can't confirm its legitimacy even though it's right there in in front of our faces it's it's this is the game that they've played for years in the intelligence community not just with the ufo subject it's just smearing good information with bad to make it you know hard to to confirm uh you know i look we've been told that there are a few videos that show certain things you know i believe they exist but will we ever see them because of the overclassification at this point it doesn't look likely but right Who's to say further down the line that the overclassification and the systems that that is all around changes at some point? If Congress managed to do something and get that to change, it could happen. But right. again, we don't know. And and the reason I bring up videos is because AI, artificial intelligence, is about to render any picture, video of a UFO, civilian produced just untrustworthy like it's yeah. going to be so hard to differentiate what is real and what is fake and do you foresee a, a, a problem and going faster than coming faster than than we think i, I mean think what we chat will... gpt has what soma that's coming out soon yeah 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 that that's the thing i think it's gonna muddy the water a lot more we're gonna see a lot more fake or ai created videos flying around you know online on social media where people will be arguing about them for weeks whether they're real or not i think the only way that we will have any kind of positivity from any videos coming out is if they're heavily backed with metadata and chain of custody as, you know, especially if they're leaked, let's say leaked military videos, then we can prove that they were taken at a certain time in a certain year, a certain location with all of that metadata intact and a full chain of custody. Because right. without that, there's no point. You could be arguing about it for years and years. And if you just simply cannot prove it 100%, it's a waste of time now because of the AI. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. And, it, and it, 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 it's, I mean, some of the videos that I've seen already, are just like, oh my god, I, like it's almost indistinguishable, and it's sure. it's. I mean, you know, it'll make content creation a, a, a little bit more fun and and um, easy. But as far as uh, what, what, like, what will f going forward, what will constitute as evidence? Right, it's going to have to be multiple sensor systems picking yeah. something up metadata like you said um you know uh cross-referenced with uh um documentation and hopefully multiple uh, uh, uh multiple videos so um you know it, it it it's it's frustrating but with the rise of technology comes the rise of of you know, potential, potential hoaxes. So, um, it's, it's yeah. something that the UFO community is going to be ready to face. Honestly. Um, Vinny, you yourself, how, how did you become interested in this topic specifically, um, and, and, and starting all this because, uh, you've been doing a lot of work to try to, again, move the ball forward um what, what you know what got you into 
UFOs and in this crazy world? I mean, I grew up in the, I'm a child of the late seventies. I grew up with the eighties with an abundance of really good quality, high end science fiction movies. And that really like set my brain off on the, the, the questions of, you know, the life out there and stuff. And, you know, going further on in life into my twenties and thirties, watching a lot of documentaries on fringe subjects, I suppose you could say uh, of all sorts, um, eventually right. landing on the UFO subject probably 20 years ago. And then about 15 years ago, I found myself just, I need more. I, I need more. I answers. need it. So, yeah. <laughs> so I would, you know, I, that's when I just would sit late at night for many nights, just browsing through declassified archives, FBI, CIA, you name it. I spent many of hours delving through them, thinking that I may find something that no one else has found, you know, naively thinking. And that just sort of set me off. You know, I was just addicted to research, um, looking at old cases and stuff. And it just kind of, it just grew from there. And I guess like a lot of people, when the pandemic hit, that kind of gave me the opportunity to, to start doing more, putting myself out there. And, you know, here we are. I haven't, had a minute's break to, to really stop i'm i live and breathe this subject and uh i definitely have a right. lot more questions than i started with well you did uh you worked on uh, a series phenomenology um and what was your what you know uh if you could could you explain what you guys were doing and what the two seasons uh kind of uh what what did you come away from it with yeah, sure. So if you um, can try to summarize it, I know it's a so lot, for, but... for hundred, hundreds of years on these two peaks on the edge of the Andean plateau <laughs> uh, in Colombia, these strange, mysterious lights had been witnessed and recorded uh, for hundreds of years. Um, and so we wanted to go out there. Uh, my friend Ashley Cowie, who who led the team, he lives out there. He had captured some photographs of these strange lights on a couple of occasions over the past few years. And so he wanted to bring a team out to investigate it, uh, speak to a lot of the indigenous locals as well. You know, they live and breathe spirituality and, and, and high strangeness. So we went out there, we did all that. We explored the area and spoke to the, the, a lot of witnesses. And luckily enough, at the end of the first trip, we managed to film these strange lights on the mountain. Um, and so that was great. That was an eye opener for me, an incredible experience. Uh, season two, we went back out. We tried to take a bit more equipment with us. I took, I have a, a thermal drone, which would have been interesting to pick up these lights with. Unfortunately, we didn't see them again. But part of this documentary was also to document our journey as people. You know, I'm just a guy from the UK who doesn't really have much business being in rural Colombia speaking with indigenous people about UFOs and strange lights. So it was about how we grew as individuals as well to being in such a, a strange place and experiencing this type of thing. So it was a great experience and I hope actually to continue it in the next couple of years. That'd be fantastic. Uh, I really, I mean, I, like I said, I enjoyed it and I love this. I love the boots on the ground and like the, yeah. the raw approach that you guys took. Um, and it's something that Dan and I have been talking about, um, because, you know, he's going to be moving to, to my side of the, my side of the world. Um, so, uh, doing more stuff like that. Um, and I, I just, like I said, I really, I really liked it. I wish, uh, I wish he, I wish you guys shopped it to like, uh, a bigger, um, is there any talks about that? Like getting it from Vimeo to, like Amazon or, or Tubi to, I mean that, that three part series Tubi did with uh TMZ was actually really good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. I, I mean, yeah, there have been conversations had about putting it on a, a more uh, accessible platform. The, I think the thing is, is that all of us involved in it, we're all so busy with so many other things in our lives that sometimes these things either take time or they get put to the to kind of the wayside every now and again. So who knows further down the line? Yeah. It, 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 we could start seeing it on bigger platforms. I, I hope that's the case, but at the end of the day, all I'm, all I'm really care about is actually doing the work, get, getting out there, getting those boots on the ground because the feeling you get when you're doing it is, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a pinch yourself moment. You can't believe that this subject has taken you so far around the world to do these kind of investigations, you know, and the search.